Morning everyone. So I started developing somewhere around 1999. Anybody knows what this is? Who do who knows? So yeah, there are some younger faces not knowing. So I started with web development. It was really no rocket science. It was simple CMSs, e-learning platforms and stuff like that, but most of my problems came out of front end. I was working as a one man uh, as a as a one man band, and if you ever had a pleasure or displeasure to work with IE and Netscape, well, five five IE, you know how much time it takes you to make something look good in one, and then fix the other, then back fix the first, and so on and so forth. And I really hated that part of the job. It even made me go back to university because I really didn't find myself loving that kind of job. Some years later, I started working on a, sm on a new project in a company and it was a really small project. This is actually a pun, but yeah, really small project that kept growing. Like some time later, we had more clients, more users, more money, more traffic, more features, more everything, and it kept growing. And if you notice, it keeps growing and growing and growing and I've been a pretty good carpenter because this is all wood. But at some point you have to change your skill sets. You have to upgrade them because you can't build this with wood. What I figured out at some point is that some of my features kept coming onto not so nice legacy parts. And the problem is that I built both. Well, my clients, my pro, my clients, actually were paying for something like this. In my head, it looked like something like this, and again, no concrete, aluminum and glass have to be nice and shiny. But what kept happening was this, because we kept growing and growing and growing, and they wanted this. But it took me quite a while to figure out that what mostly businesses do want is this. We have two features with some kind of mix up because businesses most often don't know what they want. They know they will need a feature, but they don't know what exactly they want. So this is not necessarily a bad thing, but growing a project made me have made me have a Stockholm Syndrome. Because what I started thinking is that every project I do, however small it is, will need a big concrete foundation. Because each and every of them will become that monster. But unfortunately, premature optimization is the root of, is the root of all evil. So when testing makes no sense, Let's discuss that. Uh, my name is Miro Svartan. On Twitter, you can find me using this handle. So let's look at websites. I'm going to guess that more or less all of you built some kind of websites, right? I'm not talking Mars Rover things. Simple websites. So if there's a bug, somebody comes, tells you, hey, there's a bug, can you fix it? It might take you 10 minutes to fix it, right? Maybe it will take you an hour. And you can ship it in like five minutes, right? So hmm, we can easily fix things around. What with Android? Somebody reports a bug, you fix it, you send it to Play Store. It's going to take them a few days, right? For everybody to get it. That might be OK. You start developing iOS, it may take a week or two. So why am I talking about mobile applications? A lot of web developers went to mobile applications, mobile application development, with the same mindset of, if I need to fix something, I can fix it quickly. But if you develop desktop application, they usually don't have app stores to update. Well, at least the most popular don't. But if you were building a hardware, it's a router. Cool. 
that's at least not hard to update, right? To fix a bug. Because it's connected to the internet, right? But what if it's the bug in the update software? How are you going to fix that? Are you going to send your team members all over the world to update a few millions of them? What if it's not connected to internet? And it's not really easy to take it to a service. I mean, if you ever had to buy one of these, you know how heavy it is. So when should we write tests? Maybe when it's a high cost to fix? That okay? Anybody here? Hello, good morning. I like to sometimes look at it with maybe cost of fixing is higher than cost of testing. Because if it's cheaper to employ more people to test your products than to go and fix them when shit happens, maybe that makes sense. So, should we even test apps? Like, web is easy to clean, fix, right? Who would test web apps? Who would not? Oh, so the amount of hands doesn't sum up the number of people. So, who would test? Who wouldn't? Okay, I know it's like nine in the morning, but I do know basic math. So, so the issue might be that, okay, for simple app, yeah. If it's a promo site, yeah, but banks actually have websites as well. You know, you know those things when you need to pay somebody some money and then you go log in and put their account and then you send them money. And having a bug there can be really, really expensive, right? So it's not always about value to fix the cost of the fix. It can be much more. It can be about value. Not only reputation, a lot of things. I mean, at the end, more or less our all, whole lives turn around money. Whatever we want or don't want to admit to ourselves, money is pretty important. But what's actually value? I think of value as benefit minus the cost. Cost to fix, but benefit doesn't have to be money directly. It can be reputation lost. It can be unhappy developers. It can be unhappy employees. Because if you have happy employees versus unhappy, you have to off have HR to handle new hiring. You have to pay for ads. You have to find those new people. You have to pay them a lot more money than the happy ones because hmm, we're losing people. A lot of those things cost money. So, if you look at a bit of a different example. So, on the other hand, what if you have a really, really big tomato garden? Like, that produces a lot and lot and lot of tomatoes. Do you need a lab to test that there are no sicknesses? Because if your farm gets some kind of disease, you might lose all of your crop. That's value as well. And you have to look at the cost of checking that everything is okay. I mean, I'm not talking about you having a small garden of tomatoes. Because if something happens, you can always just go to a market and buy buy some organic ones, right? So maybe a lot of testing in a small environment brings no value. So some of the fallacies that I have noticed and I have done as well. So 
I thought that testing makes my projects more expensive. Because what I thought that when I create an in when I create an invoice that it has to say development hundred hours, testing fifty hours. Until a friend of mine told me, well, do you charge for manual testing? Like, do you say development 150 for manual testing? And by manual testing, I'm not talking about QA or QC checking it. It's about me writing the code and manually testing it. Why do we do a separation of coding and writing tests? But we don't see a difference between coding and checking it in the browser or somewhere. But bugs cost too. I mean, for most of the companies, bugs cost too. I know a lot of companies that actually have a business model around creating bugs. Because if you create bugs for your clients, they need you more. You're generating future revenue. Anybody buying a car lately? A few hands. Let's say that you want to buy this one. And you don't have enough money. Can you get, go to a car salon and say, hey, do you test your cars? Yes. Can I get the one that you're not? Because it's going to be cheaper, right? And I'm not talking about you putting your family into an untested vehicle that can go 150 kilometers an hour. I'm just talking about nobody will tell you, hey, you can buy this product, it's tested, and you can buy that same product, but it's not. It's the part of the product. Companies do have multiple products and different quality on it. But you can't say buy the same product that well. If you're looking into how to get into testing, start it. Ask for forgiveness, not permission. I did it that way and it worked pretty well. Instead of saying, hey, this project needs 100 hours of uh, development, 50 hours of testing, it needs 150 hours of development. Because testing as if the person doing the code is actually development, not quality assurance or quality control. Another thing is, but that makes all of my projects take 150 instead of 100 hours. Should I do it? There's actually a pretty big difference between you learning how to test and you using tests for your code. So yes, some of your first projects will take longer, will take more time, but you have to learn how to do it effectively. If I told you that I lost my mobile phone on the airport now, and I ask some of you, can somebody grab their car and go there? You would say, yeah, it's going to take me like an hour and a half to go to the airport and back. But what if you don't have a car? How much time is it going to be to, for you to uh, get the license? It usually takes like three months, right? I can walk to the airport in three months and back. But I don't count learning how to drive into when I have to drive, right? You don't as well. So don't think of it there. Okay. But it also takes extra time. Let's go one back. Manual testing also takes time. You write something. Then you open up the browser, then you check it, right? 
then you go back, you do something, then you check everything out. So if you could just write a test for whatever your test, for whatever you're manually testing, that's good. You're just spending the same time. Some years ago, a client told me, hey, we want another payment gateway. And I said, well, cool, yeah, why not? I can build that in one day. And I put it up, some code, got it running, and you could actually buy something using that pay payment gateway. And we shipped it, which was a terrible mistake because at the time, I didn't understand the difference of uh, <coughs> uh, proof of concept and something that's ready for production. Because what I thought was that, well, if you can buy something, that's production ready. But features actually have a different life cycle. Phase one is the idea of exploration. So in my case, it was how does that payment gateway work? Let's build some code to check it out. So that I can go there, I can pay something, check all of the uh, messages they send back. The second phase is modeling and architecture. When I'm trying to use TDD or BDD to get the modeling done. In the first phase, for me, it's almost all of it, not almost, it is always manual testing. I don't want to write tests for something that I'm exploring. In modeling, I'm writing tests. I'm not testing, I'm modeling. During development, I start adding some tests and I start testing that my expectations were met. But when I get into production phase, I often delete some of them. I don't need always all of them. I'm sometimes really anal when I'm working with money. So I do so many tests that just to be sure that when I'm changing something, something doesn't break. But I don't need to check, a che to test the checkout form in 10 different languages using 10 different uh, test cards. Oh, this is one of my favorite. Your sh code should have 100% code coverage. Because otherwise, how do you know what's testing and what's not? So I actually tried that out. And it was terrible, terrible idea. Because I started with what's the simplest thing to test, getters and setters. That bring no value. And they're nice for like first 15 minutes. They're okay after an hour, after like two or three hours testing. No, I don't want to see tests anytime soon. And I've seen people doing it the same. They go for the stupid tests that are so repetitive that it makes them sick of testing. Writing tests later is really a bad idea. Really a bad idea. Because most often people build, well, developers build a group, big feature. And then somebody comes along and says, hey, we need to write tests for it. Which most often means that, hmm, I tested it all manually and now I have to write tests. No, everything works. I don't need tests. No, you do need tests. And they literally go and copy the code into tests. Together with all of the bugs. Because they're not thinking what they're testing. They're literally copying what the code does into tests.
which creates a problem of we have tests because the manager told us that we need to have tests. Nobody understands why you need tests, but you have them. So let's say you have a car. Car costs, having a car costs, right? You have to pay registration, insurance, and things like that. What if it's on the bottom of a lake? So, you, so you're paying a car insurance and registration and your car is on the bottom of the lake. And you have to take care of it because hmm, you'll just keep paying so that nobody notices that there's no car. What's the point of having a car like this? And a lot of companies have tests like that. Oh yes, we have a lot of tests. They're useless. They can often even be confusing for a new person coming in, looking, oh, test does this, oh, does this, yeah, that's valid. People thinking that test-driven development has anything to do with testing. Well, the first problem is that test-driven development doesn't exist. It's test-driven design. And it's about modeling, not about testing. Yes, we do write tests, but not for sake of testing, for sake of modeling. And this is a part that confuses people the most. So, <coughs> have you ever been in a car where you have never drove? Anybody ride or ro ever rode in a car? And not a drove. Really four people? Okay. So you see, you don't necessarily have to drive a car to be in it. Okay? You can just be a rider in a car. So you can use tests for testing, but you can use them as well for modeling. I don't know how many of you know who DHH is. So he's an author of Ruby on Rails framework. And some years ago, he said, hey, TDD is dead, long live testing. And everybody went batshit crazy, like internet does. And I saw a lot of people, hey, I told you TDD makes no sense. And they were just waiting when he's going to say the testing makes no sense, so that they can say everybody, ha ah, ha I never tested, I was right. But the problem that people don't understand is, so how many of you know who DHH is? Okay, so he runs a small company named Basecamp, which is more or less a nice to-do list with some additional features. And they have been running it for 10 years. They know the domain. They have nothing to explore. They're one of those companies when a giant corporation comes and says, hey, can you build us that feature we need it? They say, go away and close their accounts. They want to be a simple app. They live in a wonderful world of their own. Those kinds of companies are rare. Most of other companies explore what's beyond. They don't want to. They enjoy where they are. <clears throat> For me, one of the biggest issues with TDD was, should I use it always and everywhere? And if you look at some older texts and older uh, talks, even the proponents of TDD said, yeah, you should use it everywhere. And my problem was, so if I'm doing doctrine entities and I have to add five properties and I'm doing it the TDD way, it's going to take me like two hours for something that usually can take me about four minutes. And I really don't have nothing to explore. It's four properties and four setters getters. 
Only recently people noticed how misunderstood all the way was. All the way in sense of exploring. If you're doing a task that you know how to do, TDD is not bringing you any value. Because you have already done that task multiple times somewhere else. Maybe it's even better to just copy that code from that other project here and use it, than to try to do it again. But let's talk about other aspects. I'm going to guess that more or less everyone here changed the company. How did you like going to a project that has no tests? Anyone ever did that? Have you actually ever gone to a company that has one, that has tests? Uh, uh, that has good test coverage? Okay, a few hands. I loved it. I really loved it. I was productive on the first day. First day. I knew that if I screw up something, tests will tell me what I screwed up. So, yeah, testing helps to onboard people easier because you give them freedom to try things out and you have that harness to save them from dropping all production data. It's much easier to add new features when you know that existing ones still work after your changes, right? What if you have to refactor something? Because we should refactor often and early. You can check that things are still working. It's even easier to rewrite things. And it has a really good side effect for PHP developers that finally you can have some sort time because our code doesn't compile, so we don't have time for that. You get cleaner code, much cleaner code. Have you ever tried to build shitty code with tests? How painful was it? Really? For me, it's complete madness when 50 lines of code have like 500 lines of tests. And that does happen when you write shitty code. When you have an if, and an if, and an if, and then a for loop, and then an if, and then an if, and then an if. Try to test that. But for small apps, probably writing tests doesn't make sense. Because what they usually don't, ha they usually are used for promos or they are supposed to be beautiful, they don't have that much domain logic behind them. And for most of them, it's there should be some admin where we can add text, even if it changes. So if you have built it once, I really don't see value in changing too much. But, what, but there's another thing that, when I'm saying testing, testing is much more than me clicking it in a browser or me writing automated tests using PHP unit B hat, PHP spec atom or something like that. When we're talking about testing, let's talk about security testing. Let's talk about performance testing. Let's they talk about, uh, I can't remember the name, but screen changes testing, screen capture testing. 
Let's talk about testing it in all of the languages that our app is supposed to support. So a lot of companies don't have money or need to test everything. Like if you're a bank, you're probably going to do some security testing, right? Well, at least we hope. Although there are some Equifaxes that haven't. If you have a news site, how much do you care about security? Not at the same level the banks do, but you do care about performance. Because if there's a breaking news, you don't want to be down when it happens. I don't have the money or time to build screen capture changes. But I saw a talk a few years ago from a, I think it's a Dubai company, but I'm not 100% sure. It's an e-commerce company that has uh, shops in 18 countries or something like that using 18 languages. What they did is they built their own system that every change that comes in, they generate all of their pages, pre-change, post-change, find if anything changed. If something changed, they show it to their designers so that they can confirm that that's okay. So that's hundreds of pages on 18 languages on multiple resolutions. How much time would that cost to do it manually? But on the other hand, the site that I'm currently working on has two languages and we more or less fix if somebody reports it, some kind of a bug. We don't have that much value to spend six months building such a system. What if you're building a one-off app? Like, let's say a conference calendar for this conference. Probably writing a lot of tests doesn't bring that much value. But what's the problem is that often those conferences want to use that same software again and again and again and again. Or use your app again and again and again and again. That's a bit of a problem. If you're in the exploration phase, as I said, that payment gateway, but maybe you're trying out new library, new framework, new language. Don't bother yourself with writing tests. Try to first learn and enjoy the language, not be bothered by that. On the side of job security, if you don't write tests, that's really, really good for you because they will never fire you. Because there's a really, really big chance that you're the only person that can fix whatever happens in the business. Okay? So on that side, that's the amazing part. But unfortunately, if you ever decide to find a new job, you're not going to find it. Everybody, everybody's requirements have been experienced with testing. Last three years, I have not seen one position in PHP that has not had that requirement. So, uh, my grandma used to have some chickens, like in her garden. And we didn't have a lab to check them. There was like a veterinarian that would come along like once a year, check that there are no diseases. But at scale, you can't allow that. So what if I decide to have chickens the same way my grandma did, but like a few million of them? What I'm trying to show here is that 
I've seen a lot of companies who went from few chickens to this without changing their methodology a bit. Please don't do that. As you grow, you have to change. You have to adapt. You have to update. What do you think, what's going to happen with this company when a disease hits? There are going to be none. The worst thing that can happen is that nobody figures out that there was something. It can p kill people. Thank you. <laughs> we have a few minutes for questions. Any questions? Nobody? Okay, if you're too shy, oh. Yeah, uh, just on average, let's say, what should be the amount of time spending compared to the next one year of an auction? Let's say 100 hours of an auction. What should be the amount of time you should spend on testing? This is not. Yes. Okay, so the question is, how much time should we spend on LP. testing to versus development? Uh, my question is going to be, how much time do you spend on manual testing versus coding? It depends. Can you use the microphone? Okay, it, uh, it kind of depends from too many things, one of them how fast your internet is <laughs> and your computer. <laughs> That's the same answer. It will always depend. Yeah, of course, but... But the, when you said the development, the, the part when you say develop, sorry, when you say development, what does development mean? Okay, it's part of... It. Development is talking it, it to is, others. It is testing, but it's I all the most, meetings. Mostly before the question is mostly before before quoting the client. Let's say I have done all my projects and quotings without uh, testing, and I have quoted the client 100 hours. Let's say for a project, I decide today that my next project will be. Uh, Will be in, will include testing as well. So, okay. Uh, so, I often get this question: uh, How should I quote clients? Uh, first and foremost, my position is that we are hired because we are professionals. So, if I go to care mechanic that my car isn't working, I'm not paying for his or hers education on how to fix Skoda, Opel, or whatever. So you should know how to quote it. You should invest time and money in testing, and then you will know how much it costs. And you're the best person for that. Nobody outside can tell you, well, outside of you or your team. because. Everyone here will quote you an, another number. Some are much faster, some are much better, some are, some are much younger, so they will quote you more time, less per hour. So, sorry, there's no exact answer. You should invest in learning it and not quote it, because we don't quote clients for manual testing. We quote them for what we ship them, what we give them. Any more? Thank you all. <laughs>